Hey everyone, welcome to the NFL video. This one we're going over the Monday Night Football Showdown slate, the Packers versus the Lions. Hopefully this game goes a little bit better than the Chargers offense with last night, because man, that was ugly. So hopefully this goes better. And before we continue, if you could leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. I really appreciate it. You can also follow me on Twitter at ChrisPinnell16. And let's get right into it. So up top, we got Aaron Rodgers at 11600 He's the most expensive guy in the slate, deservedly so. He's someone I definitely want to have exposure to this week at home in Green Bay, where he typically tends to play his best football. Now, we do have a problem here. His top target, Devontae Adams, is out, which will most definitely hurt his production as a whole. So even though I want exposure to Rodgers, yeah, captain spot may be a little bit iffy. He's probably the safest option in the captain spot. But his numbers haven't been that exciting this year either. He scored 12 points, 15 points, 13 points, 30 points versus Philly, which is great. And then nine points. So besides one game, he's been very underwhelming. And as for the matchup, Detroit's been pretty below average when it comes to quarterbacks this season. They're allowing 20.1 points per game, which is 12th most in the entire league. The Packers have the higher implied point total of the two teams. So if you have to pick one quarterback, I'm going to get, I'm going to give him the nod over Matthew Stafford. But he's also 2,000 more expensive than Stafford. So chances are Stafford's probably the better value play. But I always feel a little bit safer with Aaron Rodgers just because he's playing at home in Green Bay. Typically very good at Green Bay, and he's still Aaron Rodgers. He's you know, one of the most talented quarterbacks of all time. But yeah, he's the top option in the slate for you know safety, cash games, if that's what you want to call it. And he's a safer option at captain, but he really breaks the bank. And he, and besides one game, he's been pretty bad, and you've been pretty disappointed. So I understand if you don't want to put him in the captain spot. I wouldn't say he's my most favorite option in the captain spot, because again, he's going to hurt our lineups, and there's not a ton of value options on this slate. But I do think you want to get him into the flex spot at the very least. And then Aaron Jones comes in at a pretty massive 11400 He's very, very expensive. Uh, very expensive, And this has to do with last week because he was nothing short of amazing with uh, when he went put up a 50-burger with four touchdowns on the Dallas defense. But the important thing here is that this was without Jamal Williams being active. And the problem is this week that Williams will be back. And that's going to downgrade him from being a full-time workhorse back into more of a timeshare. As when they were both healthy, week one, he played 61% of the snaps talking about Aaron Jones he played 59% of the snaps week two and 39% of the snaps week three which it's pretty scary and it's worth noting that Williams did out carry Jones in week four and week three but I would assume Jones will get the lion's share here as for the matchup Detroit is 14th DVA versus the run and giving up 29.9 points per game to running backs which is fifth worst in the league so this is a good matchup and if Jones you know, if Jones gets most of the carries here, say he gets about 15, 20 touches, I think he should be fine. But it's just he's really expensive. And, and if he's in an even split like he was uh, before Williams got hurt, it's going to be hard for him to pay off this salary because, you know, it's just hard. If you're 11,400, you need to get 20 to 25 touches unless you just score touchdown, touchdowns in bunches like he did last week. So I'm a little bit scared. I think he should be fine. I do think he does get the majority of the work here, but 11,400, we got to hope Jamal Williams isn't much of a factor. So kind of the risk is up to you there. Devontae Adams is going to be out. Matthew Stafford at 9,600. He's going to be very popular, especially at that price tag. And always got to love the cheaper quarterback options on showdowns. Like Devlin, he was fine for showdowns last night, and he was very, very cheap, 8400 I was kind of down on the Pittsburgh offense as a whole, but I said Devlin, 8400 as a quarterback. You pretty much got to throw him in. Same pretty much goes for Stafford here. He fits the bill uh, for that category. Problem is, this is a pretty tough matchup versus Green Bay. They're 50 VOA versus the pass, and only allowing 15.4 points per game to quarterbacks this season, which is 7th in the league. The Lions also have the lower implied point total of the two, but I do like the value we get with Stafford, and he should throw the ball roughly about 40 times in this game, so I think he's fine in the flex spot, and that's someone I'm looking to go, on my, go out of my way to captain him, but he's been fine this season, 24 points, 12 points, 7 points, 31 points. Not too bad. If he gets just 17, 20 points, 9,600 on the showdown slate, yeah, I'll take it. Uh, carry on jo uh, not carry on Johnson, Kenny Galladay is next at 9,400. Uh, so Galladay is the clear number one on this offense. He owns a 26% target share and a 32% market share of the team's air yards, which is most on the team. He will see quite a bit of Jari Alexander, but he did get cooked last week versus Amari Cooper, so it's not like he's unbeatable completely. And Galladay is a big receiver. He's quite talented. He's pretty athletic, so don't mind him. And volume alone, I'll have interest in him and Galladay. And I'll have interest in Galladay, especially if the lines fall behind and they have to throw the ball quite a bit. So I think Kenny Galladay is fine. He's just pretty expensive, and the matchup's not the greatest. But, you know, stood on slate. Got to get exposure to most of most everybody if you're building multiple lineups. If you're building one lineup, 
I mean, I feel good having Kenny Galladay in, but I'm not sure how easy he's going to fit your lineups just because of the price. Uh, Karrion Johnson, though, I do like him quite a bit at 8,600. So I like him a lot. And, and Green, Green Bay has been a team you want to use running backs against. They struggle versus the run this season, and I also like the price for his workload. Because ever since C.J. Anderson got the boot, he's got nearly 75% of the snaps the past two games, and he's averaging 25 touches per game, per game in that span, which is a massive workload. And we all know the dude is talented. And like I said earlier, the matchup is great as the Packers are 28th DVOA versus the run and allowing 32 points per game to running backs this season, which is third most only behind Miami and Cincy. And Karrion Johnson, he's like 3K cheaper than Aaron Jones, and he's probably going to get more work, and it's a softer matchup. Barely, but, you know, still a softer matchup. And I like that he's pretty much the only guy back there. I know Ty Johnson and uh, J.D. McKissick exist, but... You know, he's going to get the lion's share of the work. 8,600, I think he's a pretty safe play heading into the weekend. He's heading into tomorrow. And I assume he's going to be one of the more popular plays on the slate at only 8,600, especially for the work he's going to get. But I definitely like Harry on Johnson. MVS at 7,800. Guy just continues to disappoint me. I know he had one good week, but he's the wide receiver one with the absence of Devontae Adams. And he will look to do so again like he did last week as he filled in for the wide receiver one role, as I should say. But he was not impressive. He only scored 2.8 points and was actually third on the team in target share behind Jones and Allison with a 12% target share. Aaron Jones, I should say. And that's not promising, but what was, what was promising was that he had a 43% market share of the team's air yards, which was by far first on the team. So that's one positive outlook. The Lions are 12th DVOA versus the pass and are allowing 36.2 points per game to receivers, which is pretty league average, slightly above. If he can start connecting on those long balls, I think NBA is worth a you know tournament flyer. Not someone I'm looking to lock in as a safe play if you're doing single entries, but you know number one target for uh, he's number one wide receiver for Aaron Rodgers, which I know hasn't been as exciting as it used to be. But and he's obviously not as talented as uh, Devonte Adams is, but you know he's still got a role in this offense, so I don't mind Scantling. He's just not my favorite. Uh, Jimmy Graham at 7K. He seems a little pricey here, but ever since he got the two goose eggs in a row. He's had two respectful games in a row, scoring 18 and 7.1 points, and he's been more involved in the offense, and with no Adams, you'd have to expect that to continue. He also ran routes on 72% of Aaron Rodgers' pass attempts, but he saw a measly 9% target share last week. Detroit's been pretty solid versus the tight end position, too. They're only allowing 9.5 points per game, which is 10th best in the league, and Aaron Rodgers typically doesn't use the tight end position too much. I know he did a ton versus Philly, but... I'm not saying not to use Jimmy Graham. He's just not one of my most favorite plays this week, but... Again, showdown slate, so pretty much everyone's in play, but he's not a core play for me. Uh, Marvin Jones at 6,800. He's pretty interesting, I'd say. He's definitely the second fiddle to Kenny G these days, but with, he has only a 17% target share, which compared to Kenny Galladay's is pretty low. But as odd as it sounds, he's the third on the team behind Galladay and Amendola in terms of market share. I mean, target share, but he's actually has a 24% market share of the air yards on the team, which is second. He will see some looks down the field, and I gotta say, he's the Green Bay Packer killer for some reason. I don't know what it is, but in the past five games versus Green Bay, he's got 477 yards, which is including a 205-yard game a couple years ago, and he has six touchdowns in that span. So he's been scoring touchdowns in bunches versus Green Bay. I don't know. Guy seems to like to step it up in the touchdown department versus the Packers for some reason. Galladay is the more safer option with his, with his consistent volume, but he's also a lot more expensive. And Jones has some appeal as well with his ability to pop off some big plays. So don't mind Marvin Jones. He's not as safe as Kenny Galladay, but I really do like the price here. And I expect him to be pretty popular, especially with this history versus Green Bay. I know that really has nothing to do with it this year, but, you know, the narrative's nice. And he's been pretty okay this season. 10 points, 9 points, 25 points, 10 points. Only 6,800, so you get a lot of savings off of Galladay. You have to think the defense is going to care more about Galladay. So I think Marvin Jones is a pretty fine play at 6,800. Uh, next guy is going to be Geronimo Allison at 6,400. And pretty much his name is more fun than it is actually playing Geronimo Allison. But with Adams out, that's going to make him the wide receiver two in this offense, which is not as exciting as role as it used to be. He did see a larger target share than MVS last week and all receivers with his 18% target share last week. I don't mind him at this price tag. I already went over the matchup, so I'm not going to talk about that again when we talked about MVS. But again... Not too excited about John Allison, but one of these receivers is going to pop, so I'd recommend maybe splitting your ownership in your lineups if you really want exposure to a Packers receiver, which you probably do on a showdown slate. So I'd recommend splitting ex uh, splitting your exposure, but Allison is a little bit cheaper and pretty much has the same amount of upside as uh, MVS does. So 
And then the quarterbacks, we obviously can't play them. Uh, TJ Hawkinson at 5,400. I think he's a fine play. He passed con uh, concussion protocol, so he's good to go for this game. Besides the week one outing versus Arizona, which we now know is nothing too special considering how bad Arizona is versus tight ends this year, he's not been anything spectacular with one point, one point, and 11 points, and that's because he got into the end zone. He has a very low target share on this offense, which is only sitting at 13%, which is worst of the main pass catchers, and he has the lowest market share of the team's air yards as well at only 11%. So basically that means we need a touchdown here because he's more than likely not going to get it done in the yardage department or receptions. He's got two touchdowns on the season, and he has a couple called back. So honestly, I think it's worth a shot. Green Bay's been above average versus tight ends this season. But if he falls into the end zone, maybe once or twice, I think you're going to be fine with him. Not someone I'm like over the moon about, but you know he's kind of middle of the road here. Uh, Jamal Williams at 5,200. Uh, I don't love him, but if he sees the snaps he did before the concussion, which it's definitely possible. It's not like he had a leg injury and they had to work him in slowly. Might be a nice pivot off of Aaron, Aaron Jones talk, who, uh, chalk, who I believe will garner some ownership. Even though his price is super expensive, they're gonna a lot of people are going to look at the game log and see that 50 points. They think he's going to get somewhat close to that. Obviously, that's probably never ever going to happen again for Aaron, jo Aaron Jones. But I don't mind Jamal Williams. He's about half the price of Aaron Jones. And if he gets about the same amount of work, maybe a little bit less, I think that's fine value. 5200 he's definitely going to be lower owned. So don't hate Jamal Williams. And people are probably going to be off him, especially because of the injury. Uh, Packers defense at 5K. I mean, I don't love him, but besides the Eagles game, the Green Bay has, Green Bay defense has been very solid in fantasy, especially through the air. And with them being the home favorites, they would be my preferred defense. I mean, they've been fine. Nine points, negative one point. That's what their horrible game. But then they had 13 points, 12 points, and 14 points. So obviously they have a pretty solid defense this season, so I'm not against using the Packers D. And yeah, they'd be my preferred defense if I have to use one. Uh, Denny Amendola at 4,600. He missed last week. Uh, week one, he balled out with 26 points. Had that awful week two. And then week three as well. And then week four, he didn't play. But he's been, you know, he's fine for his price, I think. He's going to get consistent targets. And he's pretty much a PPR guy. He's not going to be huge in the yardage department. He doesn't score a lot of touchdowns, but he does get catches. And, you know, you get a point per catch here. So he's got a, somewhat of a decent floor. I know week two was, was awful, but still slot receivers do tend to struggle versus L.A. He's not going to put up huge yardage totals, but he was second in the receiving group and target share at 18%. I, I can see, I can envision him probably having something like a five reception game off of six targets, maybe 54 yards. Hopefully get into the touchdown if you play him. So nothing too exciting, but you know, he's not the worst player in the world. I think he's got a decent floor here, especially with his you know, somewhat consistent targets. Uh, kickers are what they are. Mason Crosby, I think the Packers are probably going to win this game, score the most points, so he's got more scoring opportunity. But as for Matt Prater, I mean, I could see the Lions moving the ball, but I could also see some of their drives stalling out, which may lead to more field goals. So, you know, I think that they're both fine. Just whoever you land on, maybe you only have 3,800 left. Maybe you have 3,600 left. No, don't mind either. Lions defense, I think they're interesting. I mean, it's a little bit riskier considering we probably like the Packers offense a little bit more, but they're going to be less owned. And if you want to be contrarian, I don't think the Packers' offense explodes, and this isn't the most awful defense in the world. I mean, 5 points, 13 points, 9 points, 7 points. And, you know, most people faded the Steelers' defense tonight, and they ended up being the better plays. They got that touchdown. So don't hate the Lions' defense. Everyone's going to be on the Packers' offense, so no one's really going to play the Lions' defense. So you could get Nets there. Again, not saying it's one of my favorite things to do in the world, but it's just a thought. Uh, Kumaro. 2,800, he's pretty much in the wide receiver three role in this offense. He ran, uh, he was running routes 67% of the time at Rodgers' pass attempts, so it's not like he's barely out there. He's going to be on the field. It's just that he's not really used. He only had a 6% target share last week, which is off two targets, got nine yards. So, I mean, really, he's got to he's got to get a touchdown because he's not going to get consistent enough targets because the wide receiver three role on the Packers' offense is really nothing productive. So, not too interesting in Kumaro. Not really interested in any of these guys, really. Ty Johnson, we could talk about him for a second. He's nothing too exciting. His main purpose is just to give on Johnson a breather. He'll get a few carries here and there and some targets, but it's going to be diff difficult for him to do enough, even at this price tag. If he gets into the end zone somehow, then he'd be fine, but it's hard to bank on touchdowns. I need guaranteed volume. Jesse James, he might see a target or two, but nothing I'm too exciting about. Uh, Marvin Hall, if Amendola somehow doesn't give it a go because he is questionable, he would move into the wide receiver three role. And, you know, week four, three targets, 47 yards, 
6.7 points at 1,200. Hey, not terrible, but this is only in play if Danny Amendola is, is somehow out. But I do expect Amendola to play. J.D. McKissick, he actually uh, started the game at receiver last week, or week four, with Amendola out. And he saw a decent role in terms of rushing attempts. But again, Amendola muddies the water here. What the water here, so I'm not probably too interested in McKissick. Unless, again, Amendola misses. And after that, it gets ugly quick. So, not interested in any of these guys. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I have not made lineups. I've not even tried to make a lineup yet. So, say we put Aaron Rodgers in the flex. Uh, maybe we throw in some Marvin Jones here. We get some Matthew Stafford. We got 7,300 left. Let's say we want to throw... Let's say we think Kerryon Johnson's got a big game. We can throw him in. That gives us 4,500 left. Not a lot to work with here. Maybe we throw in someone like a kicker. Maybe we throw in Crosby. That gives us 5,300 left. We could throw in Jamal Williams maybe. Packers defense. You got something to work with. I This is just the first time I've tried making a lineup, so... I don't know what it would look like if we had Aaron Rodgers in the captain spot. So he's 17400 That's a big price to play. Only 6250 left. Uh, so let's say we put in a kicker because we're probably going to need some value here. We can throw in Marvin Jones. Get him with a pass catcher. We can throw Geronimo Allison in there. Carry on Johnson I like a lot. That gives us 7 k left. Maybe you can go with Jimmy Graham because if we're playing Aaron Rodgers, we got to think his pass catchers do good. So maybe we can throw him, throw him in. You know, something like that along those lines. I actually don't hate that. You don't have to complete punt, which there really isn't very many punts this week at this slowdown site anyway. So, anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I hope it was helpful. If it was, never leave a like. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Really appreciate it. Got any questions, comment below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.